the Scrum at Scale Guide, the definitive guide to Scrum at Scale scaling that works. Version 1.05, 29th of April 2019. Copyright 2006 through 2019, Jeff Sutherland and Scrum Inc. All rights reserved. Scrum at Scale is a registered trademark of Scrum Inc. Released under the Creative Commons 4.0 Attribution Sharealike License. Purpose of the Scrum at Scale Guide. Scrum, as originally outlined in the Scrum Guide, is a framework for developing, delivering, and sustaining complex products by a single team. Since its inception, its usage has extended to the creation of products, processes, services, and systems that require the efforts of multiple teams. Scrum at Scale was created to efficiently coordinate this new ecosystem of teams in a way that optimizes the overall strategy of the organization. It achieves this goal through setting up a quote-unquote minimum viable bureaucracy via a scale-free architecture which naturally extends the way a single scrum team functions across the organization. This guide contains the definitions of the components that make up the scrum at scale framework including its scaled roles, scaled events, and enterprise artifacts as well as the rules that bind them together. Dr. Jeff Sutherland developed Scrum at Scale based on the fundamental principles behind Scrum, complex adaptive systems theory, game theory, and object-oriented technology. This guide was developed with the input of many experienced Scrum practitioners based on the result of their field work. Why Scrum at Scale? Scrum was designed for a single team to be able to work at its optimal capacity while maintaining a sustainable pace. In the field, it was found that as a number of Scrum teams within an organization grew, the output, working product, and velocity of those teams began to fall due to issues like cross-team dependencies and duplication of work. It became obvious that a framework for effectively coordinating those teams was needed in order to achieve linear scalability. Scrum at Scale is designed to accomplish this goal via its scale-free architecture. Scale-free architectures are commonly found in biological systems like the human body and in chip designs that require putting billions of transistors on a chip. The internet is designed to be scale-free by every node having the same structure as every other node. By utilizing a scale-free architecture, an organization is not constrained to grow in a particular way determined by a set of arbitrary rules. Rather, it can grow organically based on its unique needs and at a sustainable pace of change that can be accepted by the groups of individuals that make up the organization. The simplicity of the Scrum at Scale model is essential to the scale-free architecture and carefully avoids introducing extra complexity that will cause the productivity per team to decrease as more teams are created. Scrum at Scale is designed to scale across the organization as a whole all departments, products, and services. It can be applied across multiple domains in all types of organizations in industry, government, or academia. Definition of Scrum at Scale Scrum, a framework within which people can address complex adaptive problems while productively and creatively delivering viable products of the highest possible value. The Scrum Guide is the minimal feature set that allows inspection and adaptability via radical transparency to drive innovation, customer satisfaction, performance, and team happiness. Scrum at Scale A framework within which networks of Scrum teams operate consistently with the Scrum Guide can address complex adaptive problems while creatively delivering products of the highest possible value. Note, these products may be hardware, software, complex integrated systems, processes, services, etc. depending upon the domain of the Scrum teams. Scrum at Scale is lightweight, the minimum viable bureaucracy. Simple to understand, consists only of Scrum teams. Difficult to master, requires implementing a new operating model. Scrum at Scale is a framework for scaling Scrum. It radically simplifies scaling by using Scrum to scale Scrum. In Scrum, care is taken to separate accountability of the what from the how. The same care is taken in the Scrum at Scale so that jurisdiction and accountability are expressly understood in order to eliminate wasteful organizational conflict that keeps teams from achieving their optimal productivity. 
Scrum at Scale consists of components that allow an organization to customize their transformational strategy and implementation. It gives them the ability to target their incrementally prioritized change efforts in the areas they deem most valuable or most in need of change and then progress on to others. In separating these two jurisdictions, Scrum at Scale contains two cycles. The Scrum Master Cycle, the How, and the Product Owner Cycle, the What, each touching the other at two points. Taken together, these cycles can produce a powerful framework for coordinating the efforts of multiple teams along a single path. Values-Driven Culture Besides separating accountability of the what and the how, Scrum at Scale further aims to build healthy organizations by creating a values-driven culture in an empirical setting. The Scrum values are openness, courage, focus, respect, and commitment. These values drive empirical decision making which depends on the three pillars of transparency, inspection, and adaption. Openness supports transparency into all of the work and processes, without which there is no ability to inspect them honestly and attempt to adapt them for the better. Courage refers to taking the bold leaps required to deliver value quicker in innovative ways. Focus and commitment refer to the way we handle our work obligations. Putting customer value delivery is the highest priority. Lastly, all of this must occur in an environment based on respect for individuals doing the work without whom nothing can be created. Scrum at Scale helps organizations thrive by supporting a transformational leadership model which fosters a productive environment for working at a sustainable pace and putting commitment to deliver customer-facing value at the forefront of our efforts. Scaled Structure – The Scrum of Scrums A set of scrum teams that need to coordinate in order to deliver the value to customers comprise a Scrum of Scrums (SOS). This team is responsible for a fully integrated set of potentially shippable increments of product at the end of every sprint from all participating teams. A SOS functions as a release team and must be able to directly deliver value to customers. A Scrum of Scrums operates as a Scrum team with scaled versions of the Scrum roles, events, and artifacts. Given the scaled nature of the SOS, there are some additional considerations. SOS roles. The SOS needs to have all of the skills necessary to deliver a fully integrated potentially shippable product increment at the end of every sprint and to facilitate cross-team coordination where necessary. It may need experienced architects, QA leaders, members of the product ownership team and other operational skill sets. Product owner team. For each SOS there is an associated group of product owners called a product owner team which aligns the team's priorities along a single enterprise backlog so that they can coordinate their scrum team's backlog and build alignment with stakeholders. A team's product owner is responsible for the composition and prioritization of the team backlog and may pull backlog items from the shared SOS backlog into the team backlog or generate independent backlog items at their discretion. The main functions of the product owner team are to create an overarching vision for the product and make it visible to the organization, build alignment with key stakeholders to secure support for backlog implementation, generate a single prioritized backlog ensuring that duplication of work is avoided, assure impediments and technical debt issues are properly prioritized in the backlog, create a minimal uniform definition of done that applies to all teams. Resolve dependencies raised by the teams. Generate a coordinated release plan and forecast beyond the current release plan, often called a roadmap. Decide upon and monitor metrics that give insight into the product and the market. Product owner teams, just like SOSs, function as scrum teams on their own. As such, they need to have someone acting as the scrum master and keeping the team on track in discussions. They also need a single person who is responsible for coordinating the generation of a single product backlog for all teams within the Scrum of Scrums. This person is designated as the Chief Product Owner. Chief Product Owner CPO The Chief Product Owner CPO coordinates priorities among product owners who work with individual teams. 
They align backlog priorities with stakeholder and customer needs. It may be an individual team PO who plays this role as well, or there may be a person specifically dedicated to this role. The responsibilities of the CPO are the same as that of a team PO, but at scale. The CPO is responsible for setting a strategic vision for the whole SOSs, creating a single prioritized backlog of value to be delivered by all of the teams. Note these items are typically larger product backlog items that will need further refinement and decomposition by the team's POs. Working closely with their associated Scrum of Scrum's master so that the release plan that the product owner team generates can be deployed efficiently. Monitoring customer product feedback as well as product feedback from the SOSs and adjusting the backlog accordingly. At the executive meta level leading the meta scrum event where the overall product backlog is presented and alignment with stakeholders is achieved. Scrum of Scrums Master. The Scrum Master of the Scrum of Scrums is called the Scrum of Scrums Master, SOSM. The SOSM is accountable for the release of the joint team's effort and must make progress visible, make an impediment backlog visible to the organization, remove impediments that the team cannot address themselves, facilitate prioritization of impediments with particular attention to cross-team dependencies and the distribution of backlog, improve the efficacy of the scrum of scrums, work closely with the product owner team to deploy a potentially releasable product increment at least every sprint, coordinate the team's deployment with the product owner's release plans. SOS Events Scale Daily Scrum SDS Since the SOS needs to be responsive in real time to impediments raised by the participating teams, at least one representative, usually the team's scrum master or whoever best understands the team's impediment, of each of the participating teams needs to attend a scaled daily scrum SDS. The SDS event mirrors the daily scrum in that it optimizes the collaboration and performance of the network of teams. Any person or number of people from participating teams may attend as needed. Additionally, the SDS is timeboxed to 15 minutes or less, must be attended by a representative of each team including the product owner team is a forum where the team representatives discuss what is going on well, what is getting done, and how teams can work together more effectively. Some examples of what might be discussed are what impediments does the team have that will prevent them from accomplishing their sprint goal or impact the upcoming release? Is my team doing anything that will prevent another team from accomplishing their sprint goal or impact their upcoming release? Have we discovered any new dependencies between the teams or discovered a way to resolve an existing dependency? What improvements have we discovered that can be leveraged across teams? Dealing with impediments in a SOS. The SOSM should facilitate the refinement of an impediment backlog wherein impediments are identified as quote unquote ready and prioritized to be removed. The teams then determine how best to remove them and how they will know when they are done. In some cases, the impediment resolution may require product development, in which case involvement from the SOS, CPO, and product owner team will be necessary. Particular attention should be paid to the SOS retrospective, in which the team's representative share any learnings or process improvements that their individual teams have succeeded with in order to share the best practices across the teams with the SOS. Leadership Teams Executive Action Team, EAT. The Executive Action Team, EAT, fulfills the Scrum Master role for the entire Agile organization. This leadership team creates an Agile bubble in the organization where the reference model operates with its own guidelines and procedures that integrates effectively with any part of the organization that is not Agile. It owns the Agile ecosystem, implements the Scrum values, and assures that Scrum roles are created and supported. The EAT is the final stop for impediments that cannot be removed by the SOSs that feed it. Therefore, it must be comprised of individuals who are empowered politically and financially to remove them. The function of the EAT is to coordinate multiple SOSs and to interface with any non-agile parts of the organization. As with any scrum team, it needs a PO, a SM, and a transparent backlog. 
EAT Backlog and Responsibilities. The EAT is accountable for the quality of Scrum within the organization. As such, the entire SM organization reports into the EAT. The EAT's role is to create an organizational transformation backlog, a prioritized list of the agile initiatives that need to be accomplished, and see that it is carried out. The EAT ensures that a product owner organization is created and funded and that this organization is represented on the EAT to support these efforts. The EAT's responsibility include but are not limited to creating an agile operating system for the reference model as it scales through the organization including corporate operational rules, procedures, and guidelines to enable agility, measuring and improving the quality of Scrum in the organization, building capability within the organization for business agility, creating a center for continuous learning for Scrum professionals, supporting the exploration of new ways of working, Executive Meta Scrum Teams, EMS. The product owner teams enable a network design of product owners, which is infinitely scalable with their associated SOSs. The product owner team for the entire Agile organization meets with key stakeholders at the Executive Meta Scrum. The EMS owns the organizational vision and sets the strategic priorities aligning all teams around common goals. The Executive Metascrum team holds a stakeholder alignment meeting, the Metascrum event, on a regular cadence at least once per sprint. Members of the Executive Metascrum team or proxy attend the Metascrum event wherein the chief product owner presents the product backlog to business owners who control funding, personnel, and customer commitments. They address any changes needed to strategy, funding, resource allocation, and deployments, and collaborate with the chief product owner to build an agreement on a product backlog that they will support until the next Metascrum event. This Scrum is the forum for leadership, stakeholders, and business owners to express their preferences or sometimes urgent demands that may cause the chief product owner's backlog to be restructured. Scaling Scaling the SOS. Depending upon the size of the organization or implementation, more than one SOS may be needed to deliver a very complex product. In such cases, a Scrum of Scrum of Scrums SOSOS, can be created out of multiple Scrums of Scrums. The SOSOS is an organic pattern of Scrum teams which is infinitely scalable. Each SOSOS should have SOSOSMs and a scaled version of each artifact and event. Scaling the SOS reduces the number of communication pathways within the organization so that complexity is encapsulated. The SOSOS interfaces with a SOS in the exact same manner that a SOS interfaces with a single team, which allows for linear scalability. While the Scrum Guide defines the optimal team size as being 3 to 9 people, Harvard Research determined that the optimal team size is 4.6 people on average. Experiments with high-performing Scrum teams have repeatedly shown that 4 or 5 people doing the work is the optimal size. It is essential to linear scalability that this pattern be the same for the smaller number of teams in a SOS. Therefore, in the above and following diagrams, pentagons were chosen to represent a team of five. These diagrams are meant to be examples only and your organizational diagram may differ greatly. Scaling the product owner team. Just as SOSs can grow into SOSs, product owner teams also expand by the same mechanism. There is no specific term associated with these expanded units, nor do the CPOs of them have specific expanded titles. We encourage each organization to develop their own. For the following diagrams, we have chosen to add an additional quote-unquote chief to the title of those POs as they magnify out. Scrum Master Cycle, Coordinating the How. The, the SM organization, SMs, SOSMs, and EAT work as a whole to complete the components of the Scrum Master Cycle. The components unique to the Scrum Master Cycle are continuous improvement and impediment removal, cross-team coordination and deployment. Continuous improvement and impediment removal. The goals of continuous improvement and impediment removal are to identify impediments and reframe them as opportunities. 
maintain a healthy and structured environment for prioritizing and removing impediments and then verifying the resulting improvements, ensure visibility in the organization to effect change. Cross-team coordination. The goals of cross-team coordination are to coordinate similar processes across multiple related teams, mitigate cross-team dependencies to ensure they don't become impediments, maintain alignment of team norms and guidelines for consistent output. Deployment. Since the goal of the SOS is to function as a release team, the deployment of product falls under their scope. While what is contained in any release falls under the scope of the product owners, therefore the goals of the deployment are to deliver a consistent flow of valuable finished product to customers, integrate the work of different teams into one seamless product, ensure high quality of the customer experience. Product owner cycle coordinating the what. The PO organization, the product owners of the CPOs and the executive Metascrum, work as a whole to satisfy the components of the product owner cycle. The components unique to the product owner cycle are strategic vision, backlog prioritization, backlog decomposition and refinement, and release planning. Strategic vision. The goals of setting a strategic vision are to clearly align the entire organization along a shared path forward, compellingly articulate why the organization exists, describe what the organization will do to leverage key assets in support of its mission, respond to rapidly changing market conditions. Backlog prioritization. The goals of backlog prioritization are to identify a clear ordering for products, features, and services to be delivered, reflect value creation, risk mitigation, and internal dependencies in ordering of the backlog, prioritize the high-level initiatives across the entire Agile organization prior to backlog decomposition and refinement. Backlog decomposition and refinement. The goals of backlog decomposition and refinement are to break complex products and projects into independent functional elements that can be completed by one team in one sprint capture and distill emerging requirements and customer feedback, ensure all backlog items are truly ready so that they can be pulled by the individual teams. Release planning. The goals of release planning are to forecast delivery of key features and capabilities, communicate delivery expectations to stakeholders, update prioritization as needed. Note that release planning may encompass one or many releases of the product to a customer. It is a higher level planning horizon than a single sprint, usually covering a period of one to six months. Connecting the POSM cycles. The PO and SM cycles have two touch points, team level process and product and release feedback. Both cycles need metrics and transparency. Team level process. The team level process constitutes the first touch point between Scrum Master and the product owner cycles and is laid out clearly in the Scrum Guide. It is composed of three artifacts, five events, and three roles. The goals of the team level process are to maximize the flow of completed and quality tested work, increase performance of the team over time, operate in a way that is sustainable and enriching for the team, accelerate the customer feedback loop product and release feedback. The product and release feedback component is the second point where the PO and SM cycles touch. Product feedback drives the continuous improvement through adjusting the product backlog while release feedback drives continuous improvement through adjusting the deployment mechanisms. The goals of obtaining and analyzing feedback are to validate our assumptions, understand how customers use and interact with the product, capture ideas for new features and functionality, define improvements to existing functionality, update progress towards product project completion to refine release planning and stakeholder alignment, identify improvements to deployment methods and mechanisms. Metrics and transparency. Radical transparency is essential for Scrum to function optimally, but it is only possible in an organization that has embraced the Scrum values. It gives the organization the ability to honestly assess its progress and to inspect and adapt its products and processes. 
This is the foundation of the empirical nature of Scrum as laid out in the Scrum Guide. Both the SM and PO cycles require metrics that will be decided upon by the separate SM and PO organizations. Metrics may be unique to both specific organizations as well as to specific functions within those organizations. Scrum at Skill does not require any specific set of metrics, but it does suggest that at a bare minimum, the organization should measure productivity. For example, changes in the amount of working product delivered per sprint. Value delivery. For example, business value per unit of team effort. Quality. For example, defect rate or service downtime. Sustainability. For example, team happiness. The goals of having metrics and transparency are to provide all decision makers, including team members, with appropriate context to make good decisions, shorten feedback cycles as much as possible to avoid overcorrection, require minimal additional effort by teams, stakeholders, or leadership. Getting started with Scrum at Scale. When implementing large networks of teams, it is critical to develop a scalable reference model for a small set of teams. Any deficiencies in a Scrum implementation will be magnified when multiple teams are deployed. Many of the initial scaling problems will be organizational policies and procedures or development practices that block high performance and frustrate teams. Therefore, the first challenge is to create a small set of teams that implement Scrum well. This is best accomplished by the creation of an Executive Action Team EAT, which is accountable for the development and execution of the transformation strategy. The EAT must be comprised of individuals who are empowered politically and financially to ensure the existence of the reference model. This set of teams works through organizational issues that block agility and creates a reference model for Scrum that is known to work in the organization and can be used as a pattern for scaling Scrum across the organization. As the reference model of teams accelerates, impediments and bottlenecks that delay delivery, produce waste, or impede business agility become apparent. The most effective way to eliminate these problems is to spread Scrum across the organization so that the entire value stream is optimized. Scrum at Scale achieves linear scaling and productivity by saturating the organization with Scrum and distributing velocity and quality organically, consistent with the organization's specific strategy products and services. Some notes on organizational design. The scale-free nature of Scrum at Scale allows the design of the organization to be component-based, just like the framework itself. This permits for rebalancing or refactoring of teams in response to the market. As an organization grows, capturing the benefits of distributed teams may be important. Some organizations reach talent otherwise unavailable and are able to expand and contract as needed through outsourced development. Scrum at Scale shows how to do this while avoiding long lag times, comprised communications, and inferior quality, enabling linear scalability both in size and global distribution. In this organizational diagram, the knowledge and infrastructure teams represent virtual teams of specialists of which there are too few to staff each team. They coordinate with the Scrum teams as a group via service level agreements where requests flow through the PO for each specialty who converts them into a transparent ordered backlog. An important note is that these teams are not silos of individuals who sit together. This is why they are represented as hollow pentagons. Their team members sit on the actual Scrum teams, but they make up this virtual Scrum of their own for the purpose of backlog dissemination and process improvement. Customer relations, legal compliance, and people operations are included here since they are necessary parts of organizations and will exist as independent Scrum teams on their own, which all of the others may rely upon. A final note on the representation of the EAT and EMS in this diagram, they are shown as overlapping since some members sit on both of the teams. In very small organizations or implementations, the EAT and EMS may consist entirely of the same team members. End note. Scrum at scale is designed to scale productivity to get the entire organization delivering twice the value in half the time with higher quality and in a significantly improved work environment. 
Large organizations that properly implement the framework can cut the cost of their products and services while improving the quality and innovation. Scrum at Scale is designed to saturate an organization with Scrum, all teams including leadership, human resources, legal, consulting and training, and product service teams implement the same style of Scrum while streamlining and enhancing an organization. Well implemented Scrum can run an entire organization. Acknowledgements. We acknowledge IDX for the creation of the Scrum of Scrums which first allowed Scrum to scale to hundreds of teams patient keeper for the creation of the Metascrum, which enabled rapid deployment of innovative product, and OpenView Venture Partners for scaling Scrum to the entire organization. We value input from Intel with over 25,000 people doing Scrum who taught us, quote unquote, nothing scales except a scale-free architecture, and SAP with the largest Scrum team product organization who taught us management involvement in the Metascrum is essential to get 2,000 Scrum teams to work together. The Agile coaches and trainers implementing these concepts at Amazon, GE, 3M, Toyota, Spotify, Marsk, Comcast, AT&T, and many other companies working with Jeff Sutherland have been helpful in testing these concepts across a wide range of companies in different domains. And finally, Avi Schneer, Alex Sutherland and Jessica Larson have been invaluable in formulating and editing this document.